And if you have a media buyer um, that does not know these things and how to show that you are a trusted advertiser, then you are, you know, it's not going to be easy for you. Welcome, everybody. You are listening to the Omni Channel podcast, a podcast from digital marketers to digital marketers. I'm your host, Dominique Allegrand, and my mission is to help fellow marketers and entrepreneurs to grow their businesses online. So buckle up and let's get started. Hello, my dearest internet friends. Welcome back to another super interesting video on Facebook ad. In this topic, um, how do I say it? This topic is going to be probably the least interesting to listen to, even though it's super important. Okay. So, and today we are going to talk about compliancy. I know, I know, I know it's super boring. And um, I thought about whether or not I should cover this, but lo and behold, I see people losing their heads over this one. Um, so I decided to go ahead and cover it really quickly. So we get this out of the way and um, hopefully you understand um, how to stay compliant with your Facebook ads and with your landing pages, okay? Before we get into the topic, um, the reason why I decided to bring this topic up for you and explain to you more about compliancy is that, um, very simply, cautionary tale, I was running like, one of my very first ad campaigns back, back in the days, and I remember launching it and then putting the bids and then literally nothing happened. They were crickets, you know. I had a landing page and no one was clicking there and it has zero reach, zero engagement, zero nothing. And funnily enough, I think the other day I was inside of a Facebook group and someone was saying like, oh, I'm not sure what's happening. I'm launching this campaign. I already put money in it. It's just it's not feeding into the budget. Like my budget is not feeding into the whole campaign. And everyone else was like, maybe your audience is too small. And I'm like, uh-huh. Or <laughs> maybe you were just like me back in the days and your wherever you're doing is not compliant okay and we're gonna dissect this a bit so that you understand what i mean by not being compliant i mean that could mean a lot of things certainly um but uh, i want you to understand first like how facebook ads work in a way and just give you some backstory so that you can then understand the explanation that comes after okay so essentially when you are launching Facebook ads, you are setting up your account, which is called the ad account. And when that happens, there are certain checklists that you have to tick, especially if it's a new ad account, um, so that when you launch your campaigns, you won't get banned or restricted, you know, any of that cool stuff <laughs> because you're already compliant with your behavior towards Facebook. So Facebook wants you, when you join the community, the advertiser community, to show that you are serious and you are respecting the rules right from the beginning. And there are certain things that you can do to show that, that you are like that, um, because they're literally putting you on a testing period, which means that they give you certain restrictions when it comes to your ad account. And those restrictions only go away um, when you show them that you're a trusted advertiser, okay? And if you have a media buyer um, that does not know these things and how to show that you are a trusted advertiser, then you are, you know, it's not going to be easy for you, okay? You might get those restrictions and, you know, all of the things that, of course, that come with that, okay? So you have to show Facebook that you are a trusted advertiser. That's the first part of the compliance. And I have some cool slides that I threw together like five minutes ago. I'm, I haven't even spell checked them. So if you check yesterday's slides, 
I, I did see the errors, but here we go. Um, so that's such a cool and elaborate ways to work, I know. But I just wanted to help you get the point across if you are watching this live, okay, and even not listening to that. So back to the story, you first need to show Facebook that you are a trusted advertiser. And then gradually they give you more, okay? They like you access, you know, certain elements of the platform that you haven't been able to do before. And also the other parts of the compliance is where you're leading people, okay? Backstory here. So whenever you are trying to launch your campaigns, and let's assume that you want to lead people away from the site, what Facebook calls a cool algorithm can check is whether or not where you're leading them is a compliant place, okay? Um, I'm going to tell you exactly what they check, but in, in a nutshell, they want to see a couple of things, okay? And I know it's a super boring subject. I told you it's a boring subject, um, but they want to check whether or not there is a congruency between what you're advertising and where you're leading them, okay? So congruency meaning that I have product on rings, jewelry, right? We all love that. I literally just saw an ad of a ring. I'm like, I need to get this one. So you have a product of a jewelry and you're leading to a workout page, for example. You see, that's a congruency thing. And the bots can even check whether or not, like the words that you use in your ads, whether or not that's matching where you're leading them. Do I have the same thematic, you know, the same team, the same topics? Are they quite similar to each other, okay? So that's how they check if it's a congruency thing. The second thing that they check is where I'm leading people is um, does the website is a trusted, is a trusted place? Because remember, Facebook's goal is to keep you on the platform, okay? That's why you know, lead ads, for example, are much cheaper. I mean, in, in some instances, can be much more cheaper than to send people away because it wants to keep them on the platform. So once you are essentially sending people away, Facebook want to make sure where you are sending them is not going to be a spammy place to be, okay? And by the way, this Saturday, we are talk we're going to talk about with Carl on a bit more on this as well. So stay tuned for that. But um, essentially what we are checking here is that it's not a spammy place. And if it's a compliant, see, we're going back to compliance again. So uh, essentially, and I might not even use my slides for this one because I think it's easier if I, if I just explained to you. But it's checking the following things, okay? So in both cases, we have to have a compliant ad account, which we're gonna use to run our ads on Facebook, Instagram, you know, both of the platforms are, are what we're gonna use. Um, and, or if where we're leading them is also compliant. So there's a double compliancy thing. And of course the ad policies, like the way we advertise, you know, no before after pictures, like you can get away with those, but like, <laughs> you know, no shocking political stuff, you know, or, I mean, those are the things that get you banned, but that's another policy thing. And if you have a good media buyer, hopefully you won't, um, I mean, hopefully your media buyer knows that, so that's cool. Um, so you won't advertise with before after photos and all of that. That's a pretty big no-no, by the way. So if you're selling weight loss, like forget about it. Um, but uh, what we are talking about here is that ad account compliance and um, and uh, landing page compliance. Okay, just very quickly, I'm gonna tell you what I like to do uh, for my clients as well to make sure that we are cool, we're in a green, okay? Um, ad account compliance. And by the way, if it's like TMI, you can be like, oh, this is boring stuff. Like, oh, oh thank you. Do it for me, I don't care. But of course you can contact me after and we can do it for you. You don't have to think about it. It's, it's done, right? It's done once, it's, it's done, it's done. Okay, so what I'm gonna do usually from clients is that I want to make sure that they have at least, you know, two payment methods set up. The two payment methods are so fucking important because this is your first time that you're running your ads. Okay. Just to give you a bit of a detail on how it works. 
Facebook essentially gives you a credit, okay? So you can set up your daily credits, you know, your ad spend limit, and you can put like 100 bucks, right, for a day, wherever a month. You know, you can set up monthly limits as well, but you can set it up how often do you want your card to be charged, and hopefully you're not going to do it by every 50 cents they spend on your campaign. And that's why you push it up a bit so you don't get like a notification every 50 cents your ad campaign is being spent, okay? okay? Or is spending. So um, because it's going to give you a credit, you can put like 50 bucks. And, I mean, you can opt the credits, but having one payment method, if that fails, that's like huge, like oh, it's a red flag, you know? And because you are a new advertiser, I assume if you are a new advertiser, then um, essentially putting an, ex an extra payment method would be like an insurance for face. Okay, hey, I have this one uh, that doesn't work. I have a second one. And like you, you can try both of that. So I can show you that I'm trustworthy and I have, you know, at least two options to pay you guys. Okay. So that's what I like to, it's a bit of a hack. So if you didn't know that, now you do. Um, another thing is super important is just to fill out your business details, okay? To make sure that, you know, you have your business details nicely filled out and all of that is nice and clean, okay? So that they know that you are a company or, you know, sole proprietor, whatever, you have an address, phone number, whatever, like make sure that's also filled out, okay? Now, on the other end of the spectrum um, with the landing pages, okay? So just like I said, yes, we have to be concur concurrent. So what I'm leading is like same wordage, is like same feel, so I'm not putting them into a completely different platform. But also if I'm tracking on that page, and I'm assuming that you do, I mean, you're tracking who is, you know, clicking through the ads and landing there so that you can do something with that data, whatever that you're gonna do with it, retarget it's up to you but if you're tracking that you must have a cookie policy the cookie policy which is like you know i accept it that i'm being tracked which is like the minimum that you can do um to indicate people that they are being tracked so that's one thing the other thing is just terms conditions privacy policy earnings disclaimer and all of them nice in the footer all of those you know legal things so funny because uh, I, I actually did business law. Cool, right? So all those legal teas are going on the footer of your site so that we, when we creating specific landing pages, like click funnels, um, you know, lead pages, whatever you're using to build your landing pages, it's not a given. You have to put it there, okay? Uh, sometimes click funnel has, you know, the templates, but you still have to upload your thing, okay? You have to apply your terms, conditions, privacy policy, all of that. Um, another thing is, also, of course, whenever you're doing lead form ads and that you're not leading anyone away from anywhere, it's a good indication, by the way. When you're doing the lead form ads and you keep people on the site um, to sign up to your whatever you're trying to get people to sign up to, webinar, um, freebie, whatever, lead magnet, whatever you're trying to do there, um, Facebook is literally asking you, like, hey, um, if you want to do lead form, put your pr uh, privacy policy, uh, put your terms conditions, and um, yeah, put a thank you page. Like this is literally they ask you to upload it when you are doing the lead format. So that's a good indication that that's what you ex you know what is expected of you if you're running your ads on a separate landing page. Okay, I know, I know, it was a super boring session. Um, but I think it's massively important. This guy, by the way, this goes like insanely seamlessly. If you are working with a trained media buyer, this is not something that you do your, for yourself, right? This is usually what's done for you. Okay. Um, but if it's not done for you and you're like, um, I'm like launching my ads and they're not working and no one's clicking, like what the hell is happening? Um, or. And I'm telling you why it's important, okay? That's the last thing I'm gonna say here. I'm gonna let you go. Uh, but the reason why it's important, because of, of course you have to be a trusted advertiser, but Facebook is, um, how do I say it? It's a bit of an asshole, my God. And they're gonna click me out of, I'm gonna be like homeless very soon if I keep saying you no know, shit about Facebook. But essentially um, what they like to do is, of course they like you to be a nice 
a compliant advertiser, but they also care about your customer experience. Okay. They care about where you're leading people and, um, they might not even, uh, they might even let you, you know, let your budget feed into it, the campaign. Okay. Because it's just a speeding, you know, sometimes they catch you, sometimes they don't. Um, but essentially your leads cost are going to be so much higher and the quality of people they're going to spend there is going to be shit. Okay. So if you're saying, okay, why do I have bad quality leads? Okay. So they let you feed the budget into your campaign, into your non-compliant landing page or non-congruent landing page. They let you feed into that. So you have two scenarios either. They don't like you feed into it and like, what the hell, this is not working. Why there's zero, zero, zero engagement and what's happening? Or they like you feed your budget into the campaign and it's going to be just bad quality, okay? Or people will click and then we're gonna, you know, become a lead, okay? So that's why I'm saying it's it's just, it's, it's massively important. So make sure your media buyer does that for you or, um, and again, it goes to any campaigns. Like I wanted to say, okay, it's only for workshops, but no, it's not. It's it's for any and every campaign that you are doing, like whether or not your ad account is, you know, in a green check or your your landing page is. Like either or, like it's it's the minimum that has to be done for you. Okay, so it applies to everything and every campaign. Uh, FYI, I'm just letting you know if like Shopify is storing. I'm sure they like have to have, I don't do Shopify, I don't know guys, but I'm sure they have to have the returns, you know, all of the guarantees as well there, which, you know, that's like the minimum requirement. But for specifically Facebook ads, that's what you need to do, okay? So that was it for today. It's very dense in information, I know, but hopefully you're much more educated in this subject and i think i can go on and on right there's so many things as well but i hopefully that clears out a bit of um how do i say like that that kind of like you know people are like what what like what's happening you know that bit of a fog that you might have when it comes to your campaigns like either it's lead quality either it's like what's not working and like what ha that's happening so hopefully that cleared it all out for you. And now you're going to have like the most compliant landing pages and the most compliant ad accounts. And um, hopefully it helped you. So if you need help with your ad campaigns or um, whatever, you know, you're trying to launch something, you're thinking about launching something, or you have launched something and you just, the results are just not there. Uh, just drop me a message here on Facebook if you're watching or listening to me and uh, we can jump into a call and take it from there. Okay. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.